um, students out there. Um, because for me, I guess trading is just something you constantly learn. I, I view myself as a student all the time. I've been trading full time for several years at this point, um, intensely for about six. And um, we'll take it from there. So quickly, very quickly, background. Um, I have a few miles on me. I'm in my late 40s. I've had a long time interest in the market going back to the 90s. Uh, I was a cube dweller in the mutual fund industry. Um, so I saw that tech bubble grow and grow and then explode. Um, I wasn't in the investment process at all at that time. I was more of a techie and uh, I got into data mining and I started working on my own. I, I left work for myself for quite some time. Uh, the only reason I mentioned that is uh, good with numbers. And um, I think the experience of self-employment was a nice, nice thing to have before trading for yourself. Um, and again, I only trade my own money. Um, but I worked for myself for like nine years or so. And then uh, I was saving my money. Uh, I enjoyed that work, but uh, I got tired of the travel. Along the way, I actually met a mentor who uh, wanted computer help, who was a retired money manager. And uh, he started teaching me how to swing trade and uh, got me really interested in stocks in a more hands-on way, okay? Unfortunately, his health deteriorated uh, at about the time when I was ready to think about trading more heavily. Uh, I wanted to try trading full-time as I now do. Um, but I found that as a swing trader, generating daily income just um, was something, was a skill I didn't have. Um, I took some classes related to day trading. I learned some good stuff about charts. And let's see, Gene's asking me what kind of a techie I was. I was a SAS jockey, uh, mining, doing a lot of data mining in a bunch of different industries. Um, but back to trading, um, you know, basically I was learning basics. I was learning a lot of patterns. I was learning about charts and it was good information. Um, but what I found as a swing trader is that I had a really hard time um, at the open. The open was too fast for me. And also as a swing trader, gaps drove me up a wall. I, I didn't see how you could, opening gaps, uh, I didn't see how you could analyze a gap quickly enough uh, and be able to handle the open. So I was scared. Um, I was just surfing the net and it was sort of an accident that I found Melissa, Melissa's program. This is 2013. And, uh, you know, really looking back, I refer to it as sort of a tipping point for me. Um, it's where I actually started to feel like I could generate daily income, which uh, obviously is very important if you want to trade for yourself all day. Um, so along the way, I took the gap class, I took trends class. And uh, afterwards I was in the trading room for more than a year. Um, and then one interesting thing that, uh, one interesting thing along the way is that I chose to leave the room altogether and I sort of disappeared from the stock swoosh world for a while, uh, two reasons. Uh, one is I had some travel plans. I wanted to travel and um, you know, I don't know if I can say that uh, I can, I don't know if I can say that travel makes, makes you a perfect trader when you come back. Uh, I didn't quite have Melissa's experience, uh, experience there. But the best thing about leaving the room for me was that it was time for me to prove to myself that I knew what I was doing with handling gaps, handling the open. And, uh, you know, I'd seen in the room that I was reaching some of the same conclusions that Melissa was reaching. Um, but I just needed to prove it to myself. So um, these days, um, I can just say, I don't trade the same way as Melissa, but Melissa's teaching under, underlies about everything that I do. Um, what does that mean? Um, I will often go long stocks. I still go short. Um, today, I did the VRX play, um, but I will sometimes hold overnight. And so, uh, also, I'm not recommending this, but I live in multiple time frames. Um, I, I still have a little swing trader left in me, and I manage a day trading account, and then I have an IRA 
which obviously demands holding overnight long. So I, I'm not, I wouldn't recommend that for anyone right off the bat, but that's what I did and that's how I exist now. Uh, I will do the opening plays such as DRX today. I'll do continuation plays throughout the day sometimes. Um, I often will sit at the computer all day. Um, if I had to generalize uh, for myself, if I have, when I think of uh, weaknesses I have to look out for, um, I can be a little stubborn with stocks and I, I need to be on, on alert to make sure that I'm not fighting the market the wrong way. And um, I had a little running with, uh, we call it fear of losing money, which uh, I found to be something which uh, can be damaging in its own way. Fear of losing money being the situation where I don't want to honor a stop. And then in the long run, I find that I lose more money anyway if I don't honor that stop. Um, on the more positive side, strength. Um, if I'm stubborn as a weakness, probably my strengths are something like uh, patience and persistence. And uh, let's see. I've got some, a couple of notes here along the way. Patience and persistence. Um, and one other thing I'll mention, and I'll move into the whole, the, the bulk of the talk in a second. Um, I see this as a strength and it sounds, it's gonna sound weird. I like this job, okay? And I really think liking what you do, liking trading, liking studying the markets is a real advantage because, you know, as, as we all know, the markets will test each of us along the way. Which um, brings me to the next, to uh, my next piece, which is just talking about as a student, um, if I were to do it again, what would I think? Or, or what, if I could talk to my, past self from the future uh, when I was really studying this or first getting involved with the course. Um, you know, I know some of you have a lot of experience, some of you may not. But um, first of all, I just say that just it's important to recognize that, you know, trading is just a, and learning about trading is sort of a long sort of continuous journey. And uh, as I said, the market's going to test you. And this is not, a normal job that we're trying to do if we're day traders, you know, it's a, it's more like a speculative field. I kind of like drilling for oil. You know, it's a field where you can make good decisions, but good decisions don't guarantee good outcomes. Um, you know, a good trade can still stop you out and risk management is obviously is going to be critical. Um, think of it this way that, you know, the best traders still have plenty of losing trades. So, you know, if we weren't trading and we were, say, surgeons, we might be in a lot of trouble. So the issue is, if a trade loses, how much money is really lost? You know, we, we can't guarantee success, but we can assure that our losses won't be too damaging. And yes, uh, I don't know about, I'm not going to comment on dating. It just doesn't work. Um, <laughs> Um, other things I would keep in mind for students, um, if you, in regard to Melissa's class, I, I just think it would be a good thing to know the basics of candlesticks before just walking into the glass cold. Uh, and certainly you want to understand the mechanics of, of dealing with your broker and placing those trades. Because uh, once you start trading with Melissa, you know, some of these trades come up pretty quickly. Um, in class itself, I just say be open to the material. Um, there's a lot of it. 26 points is a lot to learn, fair amount to understand. Uh, I retook the class. I'd recommend retaking the class. Uh, for me, when I first got in there as the swing trader, um, I think I found that some of Melissa's entries were a little aggressive for my case, um, but it just hung in there and went with it and um, found it. Those entries are very helpful to me now. So moving on from the class, I went to the room. Um, great opportunity to ask all those questions. I was constantly writing down anecdotes, uh, just refining knowledge, you know, trying to develop my own style, so to speak. Um, and then also 
just tuning, fine tuning little things, thinking about, okay, how am I going to exit if the market is strong? How am I going to exit if the market is weak? You know, where is my comfort zone there? Because um, as we know, exits can be a little bit discretionary. You know, whether we come out in quarters, thirds, halves, the whole thing. So really, I guess what I'm talking about is making, you know, really making the system your own. Um, I think you want to internalize it, make it fit your personality. Um, that doesn't mean diving into counter trend trading, especially if you're new, but understanding your risk tolerance, understanding your exit strategy, um, you know, developing a schedule for yourself, deciding how you're going to make decisions. Uh, really, I think you just want to find ways to keep the stress down. And uh, I have a few things that I do or a few tips that I would have along the way um, for stress. I would say, first of all, don't let it be about the money. And that's never an easy, easy thing to say. Um, when I came into trading, I came right out of work, uh, right out of working for myself. And I did pretty well in that business. So I had a war chest. So I was fortunate in that I knew if I didn't make money for quite some time, I was going to be okay. It also meant, you know, I, monetarily, I was fortunate in that, you know, I didn't have a lot of dependency support and all of that stuff. So, you know, I knew the world wasn't going to end if I had a bunch of losers. Um, I just don't think you want to be in a position ever where you're trading with your back against some financial wall where you've got a big payment coming up in eight days and you've got a score. Um, that just sounds really unhealthy to me. <laughs> Um, also, to keep the stress down, think about doing, just try and do the easiest thing, you know, uh, and, and be nice to yourself along the way. Don't try to catch every move. Every single day, probably all of us can look back at charts and say, woulda, coulda, shoulda, you know, just something out there. Even if you have a good day, you can find something else that moves. Um, also, especially if you're new to the system, I think you want to focus on the best gaps and just focus on a few rather than a lot. And uh, I think that's where Melissa, one area where Melissa's system really shines. Uh, 26 points is a lot of, you know, draws a lot of distinctions between a bunch of gaps. Um, also for me, um, I only like to trade things that actually that have a fair amount of volume. I like to trade things with a narrow bid ask spread. And I, I think that's probably a good recommendation for anyone who's relatively new. And um, over time, I think you want to learn what securities you're, you're willing to trade or not trade. You know, things like ADRs, generally no, although Paul taught me about South American ADRs and Vale, vale Rio being okay. Well, most aren't. Um, you know, are you, are you going to go near those low volume stocks? Are you going to go near something with a big spread? It's up to you. Maybe you don't like biotech. Maybe BRX gives you agita. Um, and then other issues like Chinese stocks. I, I got in a fight with a Russian stock once and it drove me up a wall and I have a grudge. Um, you know, and, and do you want to deal with something like a, a triple leverage ETF? You know, these are decisions you want to make over time. But ultimately, I think for me, and I think for anyone starting, you want to keep this as simple as positive as possible. And coming back to my practices, I trade both short term and long-term with my IRA, uh, I wouldn't recommend that for starting out. Just specialize it first. Just follow Melissa. Um, I, I think you just want to get good at one thing and then develop sort of good habits and good rituals around it. You know, you go in at this time, you you look for certain types of moves. You know, I, you know, I have my ritual. My ritual includes things like at the end of the day, I have a little scan that, that that brings up any stock that gaps at all. And um, I'll just quickly look at them and see if I ever want to consider them for continuation or if I want to consider them for my IRA, something like that. Um, but really just developing good habits. You know, save, save the mental horsepower for the times when you're really under stress or you're doing something really intensely, but don't get stressed out over your prep. Just try and iron that out and make it smooth. Um, I've been very fortunate I, you know, it's been a great trip for me so far. 
again, I like doing what I'm doing. Um, and I may have mentioned that I did a fair amount of traveling or so in the last year. And with that, the only thing I will say is it was wonderful, it was great, and I'm going to travel more. But, you know, I, you, you can't pretend to be trading full on when you're in some hotel room somewhere. I can't anyway. And certainly if I'm traveling, there are other things I want to do besides sit around and watch continuation gaps. So I found that, you know, using just the opening play was something that, you know, worked for me. And uh, hopefully I made good decisions with the IRA with targets uh, for swings and so forth. Um, but anyway, as far as life as a trader, I don't really think of it as life as a trader. I think of it as, as life as a student and uh, a fortunate life in that, you know, if you get good enough at it, you have more freedom and control over your day-to-day -day, uh, day -day activities. Um, with that, um, I can probably wrap it up right there unless anyone has anything else to, any questions along the way. So I can turn that right over.